Praise the Lord. Yeah, this morning, very quickly, uh, before we go into Thanksgiving, how many of us are ready to thank God today? How many of us are ready to give glory to him that has been the one that has kept us up to this moment? My heart is filled with gratitude. And my heart is filled with joy because of what God has done. It's the eighth month of the year. He kept us through from January all the way till August. If not by his message, we would have been consumed. So today we have come to give him glory. And when it is time to give thanks, please do it with the whole of your heart and without any restriction. And the Lord will accept your thanks and your praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. And this morning, very quickly, I would like to share on the title, on the message title, Total Freedom. I will read from Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, I will read from verse 11 to 19. Luke 17, 11 to 19. Luke chapter 17, from verse 11, are we there? To 19. It reads, it said, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was cleansed, he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any foreign who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And I will read our anchor scripture for the month, John 8, 36. John 8, 36. John 8, 36, that's our anchor scripture for the month. It said, if the Son shall set you free, you are free indeed. And that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I remember in the, in the early days of my career, when I was an economist, a project economist, and when we are doing project economics for a project, we look at both intrinsic and extrinsic value of that project. The intrinsic value of the project is the value inherent in the project itself. Uh, so we produce, we, we, we have a license to drill. We went there, we do exploration, we produce the oil, we sell the oil, and the revenue that comes from what we sold it is more than the cost of production plus a return on the capital that we have employed. We said that is intrinsic value. It is obvious for everybody to see. The market knows it, everybody can evaluate it. But there is what is also called extrinsic value. The extrinsic value is not open to everyone to see. Extrinsic value is those additional gains that come as a result of doing that project. So maybe that oil feed that we are producing, I'm telling you, I'm talking, by the time I finish, we'll all become project managers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so when we're talking about extrinsic value, it is maybe that field is next to an existing asset. So if we produce this new one, we can put it in the existing one and thereby optimize that asset. That is an extrinsic value that can be derived only by our company. Extrinsic value could be as a result of when we produce the oil, we can give it to our trading arm that will trade with the oil and get additional margin additional margins on top of what they've gone, I mean, what they've gotten from revenue of selling the oil. Those are extrinsic value. It is not obvious, and it is not open for all to see. Now, the same is true when you talk about freedom. There is intrinsic freedom, and there is extrinsic freedom. And most of the time, when we talk about freedom, Everybody focuses on the intrinsic freedom, the freedom that can be seen. So one of the definitions of freedom by dictionary, it says it is a state of being free from imprisonment or slavery. That is intrinsic. It is something everybody can see. 
It is limitation. The man is in prison. The man is crippled, cannot walk. The man is challenged, and, and there are issues that is physical, and everybody can see the intrinsic, intrinsic in, in, can see it, that there is a limitation. That is intrinsic, and when such a man is free from that, that kind of intrinsic one, we said he has intrinsic freedom. Now, the extrinsic freedom is the one that most of the time we don't pay attention to. Because those are the ones that are not tangible and that cannot be seen by physical high. So the, another definition that the dictionary gave for freedom, he said it is the power or right to act, speak, or think as freely as you will. That is not physical for everybody to see. So whatever constrains your ability to act is a bondage. So when the rent is due, and even though you are gorgeously dressed and sitting nicely, but you have no idea where the money for the rent will come from, that is an extrinsic bondage that no man knows about. Are you going to talk about this morning? So it is what God wants us to be free from both extrinsic and intrinsic value. So when God said August is our month of total freedom, He's talking about both what can be seen and what cannot be seen. He's talking about freedom from ignorance. He's talking about freedom from mental limitations. He's talking about freedom from things that have hindered you from being who God wants you to be. So he's not just talking about, about the, 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 the bondages that we can see. But he's talking about total package. And this month, in the name of Jesus, that shall be your experience in the name of Jesus. Every area of bondage is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. Whatever constrained you from acting, speaking, and thinking as you will, the Lord approached them this morning in the name of Jesus. Anything that prevented your forward movement, they come to an end in the name of Jesus. You will receive your total freedom this month in the name of Jesus. And that is why John 8, 36 said, If the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. It is a complete and perfect freedom that God is talking about. And that is the case where we read in Luke 17. These lepers, they had both intrinsic and extrinsic bondage. They were told that, Bible told us that they were living in the leper's colony. And when you look at Leviticus chapter 13, Leviticus chapter 14, Bible detailed the thing, how a leper should be treated. When you look at Leviticus chapter 14 verse 36, Leviticus 14 36, Bible said a leper is unclean. Then command the priest that 36, Le Leviticus, Leviticus 13 46, 46, verse 46, verse 46. Go to verse 46. It said, he shall be unclean. That's a leper. All the days he has the soul, he shall be unclean. He is unclean. And what will happen? He shall dwell alone. His dwelling shall be where? Outside of the camp. They were restricted physically. They have no liberty to move around. They were limited emotionally and intellectually. Because in the Bible days, if you are a leper, the, if you read Leviticus 13 and 14, Moses prescribed. He said, when you are leprous, when you are from afar off, you have to be shouting, unclean, unclean, unclean. Nobody can come near you. In fact, you can't appear with the, the person face to face. You have to cover your face before you can speak to someone. So they are limited, both physically, they are limited intri intrinsically and extrinsically. They cannot relates to people. They cannot do anything with, with all people. But when they met the Son of God, when they had an encounter with Jesus, everything changed. That story changed. They experienced a total freedom. And by the time that text was ended that we read, Bible said they were free from leprosy. And in the next 15 minutes that I have, before we go to our, to our Thanksgiving, I want to show us what should be our attitude, what we need to do to be sure that this month we walk in total freedom. And I call it freedom mentality. 
What kind of mentality, what kind of freedom mentality that we need to be able to walk in this total freedom that only Jesus can give? The first freedom mentality that we need to have is the mentality that there will always be a solution. There will always be a solution. To have the belief that freedom is a possibility. Now, the first attack the enemy does is to attack our mind. The battleground, the biggest battleground for every one of us is the battleground of the mind. The enemy wants to attack your thinking. He wants to attack the way you think and feel so that he can drive you into depression and anxiety. People go into anxiety and depression because they have lost the battle of the mind. The devil we want, want to make you to feel that nothing good can come out of this thing. The devil will fight you and implant it in your mind that this situation is difficult. This situation is challenging. There is no way you are coming out of this situation. The enemy will plant it in your mind to say that in this thing you are limited. There is no way how. In fact, he wants you to feel miserable. As long as the enemy can win the battle of the mind, he has won the war. Because once there is no will, once there is no power from within, to see and know that freedom is a possibility, then you cannot win. But scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 30, 36, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, is it 36 or 38 now? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 36, he said, There is no temptation that has ever come unto man that has not, that is uncommon. 1 Corinthians 10, he said, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 10, look at, is it 36 now? He said, There is no temptation. That has ever come unto man. That is not common. The enemy will want to tell you. That you are him. There is no way out of it. It will magnify the problem. Ah. We have never seen this kind of issue before. In fact. Everybody you know that have experienced this thing. They have all died in it. It will amplify it beyond its importance. The devil wants you to say that this situation, there is no way, you can't come out of it. But it is a battle of the mind. Because scripture says there is no temptation, there is no issue that has ever happened that is not uncommon. So the first thing you must know, whatever I'm going through, I'm not the first person to go through it. Somebody else has experienced it before. And there was a solution. These two passed. Freedom mentality is refusing to give in to depression and anxiety. That even though things are constrained now, and I cannot see clearly with my physical eye how things will move forward, but I just know that there is a way. Because that scripture says, hey, please let me look for it, 1 Corinthians 10. I think 13, 13, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. First Corinthians 13. Look at that. He said, it has, no, there's no temptation that has overtaken you except such that is what? That is common to man. You are not the first person to go through it. You are not the first person to experience it. But look at it. He said, but God is what? But God is faithful. Freedom mentality is to know that this is not uncommon to man. But God is faithful. He's too faithful to fail. He's too faithful to forget. He's too faithful to, for, I mean, to forsake. He's too faithful not to fulfill his word. He has taken me out of Egypt. He's more than able to take me to Canaan land. You must have that mentality. That God is too faithful. He said because with every temptation, with every issue, every challenge, there will be what? There will be a way of escape. There is always a, a solution. But freedom is a possibility. It will not end like that. Look at those lepers. Why? It was a colony, is that not so? The lepers could have remained in their colony and said nobody has ever been healed of this leprosy. We have been in this colony for 20 years. 
Everyone grew up and died here. No healing. So why do I need to bother myself? But they had a freedom mentality. Because when they heard about Jesus, just like I'm telling you about the possibility now, they heard that Jesus was passing by. They said, if Jesus is passing by, there must be a solution. So Bible says they cried, they went and sought after him. They refused to remain in the colony. And let me ask you, have you ever thought about it? How many people were in that colony? How many lepers were in that colony? Maybe hundreds, maybe thousands. The Bible did not give us the number. But out of the multitude of lepers, how many have the mentality that is a solution? How many? Only 10 out of the multitude in the colony has the mentality that there is a solution. And it is only those 10 that experienced freedom. Don't ever get constrained to the point that you think all is lost. That all is gone. That there is no other way out of it. Because God we always make a way of escape. This ten lepers said, no, we are not going to die in this, in, in, in this colony. We are living and we need to have an encounter with God. So the first freedom, freedom mentality we need to have is the, freedom, is the mentality that there is always a solution. Every time there seems to be an hand, the song that says, you made a way. When it seems like it is all over. When it seems as if we have come to the end of the road. But suddenly, you made a way. As long as we trust in him, he will always make a way from us. And it is a prerequisite to experience total freedom. The second mentality that you need to have is the mentality of releasing the reins. Release the reins to God. Let God take control. Release the reins. The reason why some of us still find it difficult to experience freedom is because we want to be in control. It's because we want to determine how things work. It's because we are the driving seat. We don't mind having Jesus at the, at the right along at the passenger seat and say, Jesus, you can be in the car. It's no problem. You can ride along with me. In case I have issues in the office, you can help me fix the, 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 the trouble. You can ride along with me. I want to use you as my insurance policy. In case my husband is not behaving well, you can help me use your God mind to fix him. We have God ride along in the passenger seat as an insurance policy, but we refuse to let go for him to drive. If we must experience total freedom, we need to release the reins for him and let him take over. And let him take the driving seat. The leper said, we are leprous, but we are not staying here. And Bible said in verse 12 and 13 of Luke 17, he said, they cried out. They cried out. That is saying, we are here. And how did they cry out? Bible says, they, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Two things there. They realize they cannot help themselves. They know that this is beyond them. Because they've tried it before they failed. So they, they cried out and said, Jesus, acknowledge him as their savior. Say, you are the Lord of the universe. You are the master of the universe. We acknowledge your supremacy. We acknowledge that you have power over every situation and circumstances. And they did not say Jesus. They also did what? They called him master. Acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. And that he has authority. The act of calling him master is the act of worship. They were worshipping him and said, Lord, we know you have the ability to, to solve, to resolve all things. So they let go and let God. The mentality that experiences freedom is the mentality that allows God to take over. Letting go and letting him. 
When your worship is genuine, your turn around is inevitable. When your worship is genuine, your turn around is inevitable. The shepherds were saying, even though we are leprous, we still acknowledge you as God. Are you getting what I'm talking about this morning? They said, even in our leprosy, you are still God. Even in things not working, Jesus, Master, even in this difficult and trying times, you are still what? Jesus and Master. So even when it was not working, they were worshipping. Bible talked about Paul and Silas. They were in prison. They were fit. They were intrinsically bound. But Bible said in their chains, what did they do? They began to worship. And freedom came. They acknowledged God as their Lord and Master. Even in their situation. And every time we have a challenge, we have a situation, and we acknowledge Him as our Lord and our Master, what we are doing is we are handing over the issue to Him and saying, Lord, take control. It is your battle. Fight for me. I acknowledge you. I cannot do it by myself, but I know that you have the power to do it. And so they released the issue to God, knowledge Him in their own difficult time. And every time this month that you worship Him in spite of the situation, you will see Him stepping in and turning things around. Enough of trying to do everything in your own power. The apostles were trying to stop the ship from sinking in. Bible says, after they have toyed, they went to Jesus. They said, Master, Master, carry not thou that we perish. And he stood up and they just said a word and it was done. Why did they spend the time trying to resolve it before taking it to him? The mentality of freedom is the mentality of releasing the reins and letting God take control. And the third one very quickly is to act in faith. The third mentality of freedom that we must have this, this month is to act in faith. Because Jesus told them, Bible says when they worshipped him, you see, your worship calls Jesus' attention to your issue. Because if you look at verse 13, Bible says they cried out in verse 13 of Luke 17 and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Look at what verse 14 says. Verse 14 now says, he said, and then Jesus saw them, verse 14. So when he saw them, so they worshipped, the worship called God's attention to their issue, then God saw them. And when God saw them, he gave them an instruction. And he said, go, show yourselves to the priest. The Bible says, and so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Freedom of, I mean, mentality, freedom of mentality is that freedom that acts in faith. The law says, before you appear before the priest, you have to be cleansed. But Jesus said, go and show yourself. It has not happened yet, but they were walking. The miracle is in obedience. The miracle is in obedience. When we take steps of faith based on what God has told us, on the conviction that he has given to us, even though we have not seen anything changing, then you see God moving when you begin to take steps. Are you getting what I'm talking about this morning? That this month we need to act in faith. We need to take steps. We need to honor and obey the word that he has given to us. He said, even though it is not enough, but in this little, I'm going to pay my tithe. Even though it's very tight, but I just trust him and I'm going to honor him with my first fruit and release it and then I will see what he will do. Mary said, whatever he asks you to do, do you likewise. And as they were filling the drums with water, by the time they were taking it out, the water has turned to wine. 
every time you act on his instruction then you experience your total liberty and your total freedom as they were acting on God's commandment God was turning their things around for them those things that God has placed in your heart those are the things that he will use to move you to your next level that idea it dropped in your heart in the month of March that is the secret to your financial freedom that urge is given to you to do something that is the platform he wants to use to take you to the next level he has been telling you go to that place apply for that job speak to that person you have been hesitating what if what if you have been analyzing but it is in speaking to that person applying for the job. that is where the miracle comes the miracle is in obedience the miracle happened when they began to take steps of faith and in this month God is looking for us to take practical steps of faith fulfilling and following the work that he has dropped into our hearts that he has given to us and finally very quickly the fourth the fourth mentality that we need to have is to live a life of thanksgiving is to live a life of thanksgiving because bible said as they were going they got healed but one of them saw that he was healed turned back and went back to the master and Jesus said were there not ten that were healed and where are the nine only one person came back and Bible said that one person that they came back Jesus said go your way your faith has what has made you what has made you all scholars said that that statement your faith has made you all means that every traces of leprosy was removed Leprosy is a disease that attacks the skin and God made the skin to be rotten and peel off. So maybe he has a chopped off nose. Maybe his hair was already gone. Maybe some of the fingers were not there. By coming back to give thanks to God, your faith made you whole means that the nose grew back. It means that the fingers returned. It means that the hair was restored. His skin became like that of a newborn babe. He was made whole. He experienced total freedom. The other night that refused to come and testify. Yes, the leprosy is gone. But when you look at the fingers, you will know that this man once had leprosy. When you look at his hair, you will know that this man once had leprosy. But when you give thanks, it erases the signs of leprosy. It makes you old it makes your blessings complete and perfect and that is what we need to do this month as you walk as you experience him as he does one thing or the other have the attitude of thanksgiving know how to return things how to return the glory and the praise to him come back and say lord thank you thank you for my going out and my coming in thank you for bread thank you for roof over my head thank you for the clothing that i'm wearing we need to continually dwell in thanksgiving to experience continuous freedom when you look at second samuel chapter 7 bible was talking about some about about david bible says david thought in his heart after god had given him rest all around david said why am I living in a house and they have the, 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 the tent of the Lord the worst intent? He said, I'm going to build God a house. That was an heart of gratitude. He acknowledged where he's coming from. He acknowledged where he is and decided to give thanks to God that has brought him to where he is. He told the prophet, the prophet said, go and do likewise. By the time the prophet got home, God told him, no, it's not building for me. The prophet came back and said, God said you will not build, but your son will build. But because I did not even ask, and you lived in gratitude, in blessing, I will bless you. Your kingdom, I will secure. With long life, I will satisfy you. Your son will reign. God piled up bless. Are you following what I'm saying? He was grateful that God gave him rest he showed a heart of gratitude God decided to do what bless him more 
in verse 18 of 2 Samuel chapter 7, Bible said, when the prophet told him all these things, the manifestation had not even come. What did David do? Bible said, David went to the room and sat before the Lord and said, who am I, O oh God? What is my house that you have brought me this far? Go ahead, go ahead, verse 18. And yet this was a small thing in your sight, O oh Lord. And you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. Is this a manner of man, O oh God? It has not happened yet. He began to give thanks again. God said, you are giving thanks. I have not even done it. When you get to chapter, chapter 8, Bible says he began to conquer territories. He began to take dominions. He began to take authorities. Those places, they have, the battles he has lost before, he began to conquer them and retrieve them back. At the end of that chapter 8, Bible said he had become great and expanded all about. That is total freedom delivered by having a mentality of thanksgiving. Something happened. Say it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Or even that it is just this. Bishop David Ridiku said, if at all I have lost anything, God is the reason I have not lost everything. If at all I have lost anything, the reason I have not lost everything is God. So Lord, even in this loss, I am grateful. And when we have that, then our blessings become whole. Because what we are doing is you are stealing God. Uh -huh. This child, in spite of what is going through, yet he's still praising me. Yet he's still praising. Let's release her. Release. Open that, op open that gate. Open that. Let the those doors be open. Let that contract be released. Yeah, that job, she applied. They've not called her. Now talk the heart of that manager. Let them release that job. That's what happens when you begin to live in a to live a lifestyle of thanksgiving. This one leper came back and said, Lord, I'm grateful for healing. And God said, Healing is not enough. And we had wholeness. A life of thanksgiving. Make your blessings whole. I don't know what you have seen, but I've come to tell you you have not seen anything yet. If only you will have this freedom mentality. There is always a solution. This soon will pass. If you will release the rain into his hands and let him take control. If you will act in faith, you are waiting for it to happen. God said it is when you are doing it that it begins to happen. And if you learn to give him thanks, even for the thing that he has done, celebrating little victories then you will see him stepping in and doing more things for you and then you begin to experience total freedom both intrinsic and extrinsic both what the highest can see and what the highest cannot see in the name of jesus and as we thank and praise him today i declare that total freedom shall be your lot and portion in the name of jesus that every ignorance is terminated. That every manip manipulative repeat of hell is ended. That every work of the enemy comes to an end. That the Lord begins to fight battle and grants you the total freedom that he has promised this month. But you must have a heart of thanksgiving. How many of us are ready to praise God this afternoon? And to say, Lord, I'm the one that you have shown mercy. I have come to give thanks. Even though there may still be an issue, but I've come to give you thanks. I have come to thank you for January, for February, and all that you've done for me throughout the year. Let's be on our feet and just begin to give him thanks. Just begin to speak words of thanksgiving to him. As the choir come forward to lead us in praise, just begin to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you are glorious. Thank you for all that you have done. Even though the fig tree may not be blossoming, but I still give you thanks. I still give you thanks. I am the one that I've come to, to give you praise. I return today to say thank you, Lord. I return today to say thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And I want you to package your offering. Package your thanksgiving offering. Show your thanksgiving. David looked around. 
and said, God had given me all round peace. I want to build him a house. Bible said, while he was still thinking about it, God began to bless him.